Oh boy, so it looks like Christopher Nolan chose Universal Studios. He said bye-bye to Warner Brothers. Then again, Universal Studios is one of the rare studios that don't have streaming options right now. Which is, you know, not what Christopher Nolan wants. He's all about the theatrical experience. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flicks. My name is Chris Wong. First, we're going to talk about Peacemaker, the Batman spinoffs, a Joker sequel. Then finally, The Flash and how it's related to the Snyder Cut. Now, before we start, I want to show what Madison Biggles, the personal assistant for Megan Fox, had said the other day. This is a photoshopped post. I never put this on my story, nor am I privy to the casting of this project. So it looks like that was a fake. Unless it was deleted, someone caught it, and she found out that people caught it right away and decided to say it was photoshopped. We'll have to wait and see on that one. All right, let's talk about The Peacemaker. Now, Entertainment Weekly has the first look at Peacemaker, and it's a group shot of all the cast and characters that are going to be in this series. Now, I think at least two of them were from the Man Waller's team from James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, and of course you see John Cena as Peacemaker. Now nothing yet on what this movie is about, what mission they're on, but we do spot an interesting character right next to Peacemaker. Who is this costume character? Well according to James Gunn, this guy is Vigilante from DC Comics. Now we're not sure which version of Vigilante this is, but he definitely posted this picture. Now I believe the only live action version of Vigilante we've seen as so far was on Arrow, and I'm wondering if this is like the first of possible many other costume characters we're going to see in Peacemaker, including the other characters from James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. Now, I get the feeling that Peacemaker is not going to be the only series that's going to expand from The Suicide Squad, just like The Batman. There's currently one official spinoff that's coming off from The Batman, and that is the GCPD series. Well, now it's been revealed by Variety that Penguin is going to be another spin-off series coming off from the Batman, starring Colin Farrell returning as Penguin. And right now, it's really only in early development, so anything can change and anything can happen. But other scoopers have said there are more spin-off series coming from the Batman including a Catwoman series, among others. So it looks like they're definitely confident in Matt Reeves the Batman in order to expand that universe, kind of like James Gunn's The Suicide Squad expanding with Peacemaker and probably a little bit more. I still don't think the Batman is anywhere near the DCU. That's still kind of its own thing, its own universe. But, you know, there is absolutely room for growth in either universes and to expand that as well. In fact, another universe that's seemingly going to expand is Joker. Todd Phillips' Joker was in incredible achievement it earned a billion dollars in the box office and won so many different awards including the oscars joaquin phoenix was incredible as his version of joker and it was such a mind-boggling suspense thriller drama that i didn't think it actually needed a sequel but according to daniel rickman who posted on his patreon that they have indeed green lit a Joker 2. Now it's unclear whether Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix is coming back, although why would it be a Joker 2 without Joaquin Phoenix? I don't think it would work with anybody else. I really enjoy the ambiguous ending for the first Joker because you really don't know if that actually happened or was it in his mind. And where does Joker 2 take place? Does it take place right after the first Joker or years down the road? Could possibly have their own Batman because that's where Bruce Wayne was headed. So I'm wondering if they potentially thought that that was going to spin off into a bigger universe or not, just like the Batman? Or is this their way to try to connect it to the Batman somehow? I guess we'll have to wait and see. All right, let's talk about The Flash. Now, The Flash Film News, who's been kind of documenting the behind the scenes for The Flash, well, this time, they put out a curious gif of a scene in Zack Snyder's Justice League, where Aquaman is pointing at The Flash, blaming him for getting hit. Are they trying to say that Aquaman is also going to be in The Flash movie? Jason Momoa is going to join Ezra Miller once again on the set of The Flash? Now, this is not confirmation whatsoever, but it's... It does make sense because the Flash is starting to sound really Justice League like. There's a lot of characters in the Flash. I would almost say it's more like Captain America Civil War than Captain America the First Avenger. But Andy Muschietti said we are going to start off with the Flash and of course the original Batman, Batflick in that universe. And there's rumors that Henry Cavill may have been on set, Gal Gadot may have been on set. Might as well think that Jason Momoa is probably on set. I mean he is in London, the vicinity 
vicinity of the flash shoot. Now my theory is that they'll probably have a Justice League team up at the beginning of the movie. I think that just makes sense because of all the characters that are going to show up. Maybe even Martian Manhunter. And since we already know that they've kind of borrowed elements from the original Justice League storyboards for their own separate movies, maybe they borrowed the beginning of Justice League 2. In the original storyboards, the Justice League united. We open with the Justice League in acting during Natural Disaster, working as the efficient, powerful team they've become weeks after Justice League, they act together. They save lives, but they're refugees, so political tension is high, the world is on edge. Which is pretty cool because it's kind of like the sequel to Zack Snyder's Justice League and we'll get to see them actually do stuff, Justice League stuff, without even waiting for the next Justice League movie. In the aftermath, the Justice League regroup at the only headquarters they know, the Batcave. Flash is enthusiastic, while Superman remains a bit distant, at least with Batman and Aquaman is facing a continued skepticism of the surface world and his involvement in it by the people of Atlantis. Wonder Woman relates to her Arthur, her people abandoned this world long ago. It is clear that although the League is united, the world is not. The League goes back to their individual lives to mend old wounds, except for Batman who's dealing with fresh ones left alone in the cave. So I'm wondering at this point is where the Flash movie truly starts. Where Batman's all alone in the cave, the Flash is talking to him, maybe he develops a suit for the Flash so that the Flash should go on his own journey. Which takes off with Michael Keaton and Sasha Kaye. But Scoot who works in the industry and knows a lot about the Flash movie, he said this on Twitter. Flash is a bigger movie than people realize. Snyder cut level scale. Snyder cut level scale you say? Wow, that's big. I don't think that means four hours big, but I think the epicness, the amount of characters, the comic book feel of it, it could be pretty incredible. He goes on to say, Well, I know what's in the movie, and the scale of it is about as big as the Snyder Cut, starring Snyder Cut characters. Starring Snyder Cut characters. Possibly more than just Kiersey Clemens, Ben Affleck as Batman, Ezra Miller as Flash. There's gotta be more. So I just gotta believe that Henry Cavill's in here. Gal Gadot's in here. Possibly Harry Lennox's version of Martian Manhunter. I don't know if Harry Lennox is gonna show up. Of course, maybe even Jason Momoa as Aquaman. And what's even weirder was this cryptic tweet from Daniel Rickman. They don't need all of them they just need Aquaman for this to work. What does that mean? Now there's so many possibilities with this tweet but because we're talking about the Flash I can't help but think this isn't related to the Flash movie. I don't know why they would need Aquaman to work what but the fact that he said they don't need all of them meaning I don't know maybe they couldn't get all the Justice League members to appear in the Flash or is his own opinion that they didn't need all of them they just need Aquaman for it to work. But why do they need Aquaman at all. So obviously he didn't expand on that, but it just got me thinking that since Andy Muschietti really dug the Snyder Cut and made some changes to the Flash so that it's you know, more in continuity to the Snyder Cut. And according to Scoot, investors wanted that Snyder Cut continuity. Now, originally I thought maybe they could just throw it on HBO Max, Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3, but you never know. And I'm just saying that if Zack could come back, even as a director or as a producer for Justice League 2, Justice League 2 could pretty much continue off from Zack Snyder's Justice League, The Flash, Aquaman The Lost Kingdom, it could actually be a part of the DCU and it doesn't have to be on a separate universe. But regardless, it has to come down to Warner Brothers. Well, Deadline has an update about that Warner Media Discovery deal. Warner Media Discovery deal on track to close in the first half, but details are sparse. We have our go-to market strategy ready, said the Discovery CFO. The article went on to say, Executives on both sides of the $43 billion Warner Media Discovery merger again confirmed the deal is on track to close by the middle of next year, but details otherwise remain scarce on the combination that will reshape the media industry. So there is a deadline for that merger closing, and that is the middle of next year. It's getting really close. And for those of you who don't know what's happening with AT&T, Warner Media, and Discovery, the telecom giant AT&T agreed in May to spin off Warner Media which will combine with Discovery to create a behemoth run by Discovery CEO David Zaslav. So once again, David Zaslav will be controlling the whole Warner Media situation. He will be Toby Emmerich's 
and Walter Hamada's boss. Now, I'm not sure if he's friends with Toby Emmerich or Walter Hamada or he's on their side, but there's this one line that really spoke to me in that article. The strategy then as now will be aligned around what the customer Want. Well, what if the customer wants to restore the Snivers, also known as Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3? And with the restore the Snyderverse demand, I'm wondering if they saw that as something the customer wants, which is us. Whether it's in its own separate universe or part of the DCEU. 